one-point Philadelphia lead inside three to play in the quarter. And Ben again rejects Kawhi. And now Simmons ahead of the pack. Soars and finish it. Both them Bean and Simmons scraping the sky on that possession. Living good and living to see another day. 112 to 101. The Philadelphia 76ers stave off elimination and will play a decisive Game 7 against the Toronto Raptors north of the border on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern on TNT. Welcome into our NBA TV post-game coverage. The Hall of Famer Isaiah Thomas, the champion Steve Smith. I'm Jared Greenberg. Back out to Philadelphia in a couple of moments for complete post-game reaction. We've got all the press conference coverage for you. But a score that is a margin of 11, not indicative, Smitty, at all, of how much control Philadelphia had of this game. And I give Ben Simmons a lot of credit, Isaiah. He yeah. started off this game, and you saw the first four or five possession was a little shaky on both ends, and then he took over and made some plays, set the tone. And after that, I thought in the meat of the game, it was Jimmy Butler. But those two guys, for me, set the tone for the 76ers. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I thought Simmons was fantastic the way he responded after having a tough game, setting the tone, playing up-tempo, getting guys easy buckets, getting them off to good looks. So I, I thought Simmons was fantastic. Seven points, three of five in the game five loss that you're referring to tonight. Simmons comes up with 21 points, eight rebounds, six assists. It just seemed like he had a more aggressive mentality and approach to the game tonight. What I love is they play fast. Even off misses where it was dead balls, he still pushed the basketball. Mm -hmm. I think he's better when he's playing fast. There's a lot of guys can't play that way, but I think when he's playing fast and attacking, it puts so much pressure on the defense, and it looked like he wasn't afraid to get fouled tonight, Isaiah. A lot of his moves, sometimes he looked like he's avoiding yeah. contact so he won't get fouled. Today, it looked like he was the aggressor, and he wanted to draw some contact. And I, and I thought, you know, you know with, a, with a player like Simmons, you know, when they get a big lead, you know, then he becomes much more creative, much more freer, and he feels much more better about himself. So I thought them getting off to a big lead early in the game was a big part of their, you know, relaxation and feel good throughout the game. Yeah, Philadelphia led by as many as 24 in this one. And again, back out to the arena in Philadelphia in a couple of moments here for post-game coverage. Uh, Toronto, they, they got such a great, well-balanced effort, Zeke, in game five. Everyone was contributing and they didn't need that spectacular effort from Kawhi Leonard. Well, tonight, Kawhi goes for 29. Pascal Siakam has a solid game, but where was everyone else? Is it the old cliche about role players play better at home than they do on the road? Is that, is that a real thing? Yeah, it, it, it's a real thing, uh, you know, and, and that's why you, you play for home court. That's why, you, that's why the regular season matters. And it matters because if you get it, if you happen to end up in a situation like Toronto is in right now, you got a game seven, which is at home, and your role players should play better at home in a game seven situation. So Philly did what they had to do tonight, and no, Toronto's role players didn't play well. You, you don't expect them to carry the load out on the road, mm -hmm. Smitty. But when they get back home in the game seven, you expect them to play much better. You know, Isaiah, what I was surprised by at for the Toronto Raptors and Jared, they had so many open three looks. Mm -hmm. And they were hesitating. You know, you pointed out one time with Serge Ibaka. Yeah. And then on a lot of those shots, it just seemed like they weren't sure of shots. Didn't want to take them. I know Pascal Siakam is being guarded by Joel Embiid. But you got to shoot with confidence. And I think tonight they didn't look like they wanted to take those shots. And also they didn't make them as well. So I think yeah. that was a hesitation as well. The, the three losses that Toronto has had in this series to Philadelphia, tonight the Raptors shoot a playoff low 25% from three. And then their other two losses against Philadelphia this series, they shot 27% from three and 26% from three. I don't know that that's necessarily just the game, but for a team that relies so much or at least – needs that three ball to complement Kawhi, th there's your answer. It is, Jerry. And the reason why I said is, you know, it's, it's mind-boggling to me because the, draw, the double team, he was drawing and baiting, and he was kicking guys. And because of Joel Embiid, he, they weren't even full rotation. I yeah. It was just like Joel Embiid was standing there. Yeah. And if he did rotate, they drive and kick it out to another guy who had a wide open looks, and they couldn't knock him down at all. And I, I felt like Embiid's presence tonight in the middle in terms of shutting down the paint, blocking shots, changing shots, you know, forcing Toronto to shoot from the perimeter. That, that in itself, you know, let us know that Embiid, you know, was ready to play. And I thought Ooh. this was a big block. And, and I just thought, again, his, his presence around the middle, the way he threw his weight around, 
you know, was big in the game. But you're right, Toronto's got to be able to knock down perimeter shots because those perimeter shots are going to be there because Embiid is such a presence in the middle when he's healthy and playing. And to your point, the energy level seemed to be higher. Embiid didn't have a single point in the first quarter, and Philadelphia still had to feel good about themselves. You, you know, I, I, I've said this for a long time, and I'll continue to say it. When the big guys really come to play, mm -hmm. and they start throwing their weight around, and they start huffing and puffing and moving, and that, they, they, they create so much havoc in that lane, and the energy that they give off is Infectious. so... I mean, it, and, it, and it's scary for little guys, really. I mean, because those big guys really can hurt you when they start moving around, like like when they start huffing and puffing and everything. You, I give the big guys a lot of credit traditionally in this league, in the NBA, because at any given moment, if they wanted to, they could just end your career just like that. But, you know, guys like Shaq, guys like Embiid, they're very conscious of their weight. But when they start moving it around and, you know, huffing and puffing, look, guys, we don't have a chance. And that's when we have to depend on our jump shot. <laughs> we'll hear from both head coaches in a couple of moments live at the podium. But if you're with us in the pregame show, Brett Brown was speaking about how Embiid had gotten more rest, how being at home had helped him. He felt Man, better. I don't want to hear about him getting no rest. Don't, look. <laughs> Don't come to the press conference no more talking about how 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 he got some sleep. Now I, it's, it's the playoffs game yeah, seven. You don't want to hear that hey, next hey, next hey. press conference. He got the he had his soup. I don't want to hear that either. I, I, we'll just I, play basketball. Hey man, look, you are getting paid to play, yep. right? I understand your stomach was upset. You told me everything. You told me your stomach was upset. Yep. You told me you couldn't breathe right. You told <laughs> me you couldn't eat right. You didn't sleep right. Only got three hours of sleep. Hell, man, just 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 come play basketball play. and let me see. Well, the point I was going to and make, I don't want to hear your coach talking about it either. <laughs> the point I was going to make was now they've got two days off to rest before game, <laughs> before game seven on Sunday. I mean that should same, help, right? Same amount of rest as the Raptors have, right? Yeah, I, I think so. Yes, okay, yes, yes. Right. I think it's equal for, okay, for both equal. teams. Well, here comes the prep. Well, Embiid had some soup. I gave him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, <laughs> you know, and then for dinner, you know, he had a steak, you know, come, come, hey, he should be ready to go now. Really? Come on, man, show up, play. So you're saying if Embiid happens to pop up on the injury report between now and Sunday, you don't want to hear about it? I, I mean, I'm gonna be suspicious. <laughs> no one wants to hear that somebody's hurt. Correct. But in Game Seven in the playoffs, do you really think the Raptors are gonna feel sorry for him? No, nope. not at all. Okay. Nope. And then you don't want to have a built-in excuse. It, he was sick. He was sick. Your teammates know when you really couldn't go. Let the teammates talk about it. The teammates are tell. Yeah. I, I can say, Isaiah was sick, and that's it. But no one. You can't start. I can't come in. No, Isaiah's sick now. <laughs> Not before the game. Hey, true story, right? When we was playing in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Boston Celtics, we go out on the road. Okay, the fans were so crazy. We didn't trust room service. Nope, nope. Because room service, you know, back then in Boston, they would put something in your food. So we brought our own water. We brought our <laughs> own meals to make sure didn't nobody get sick. So if you worry about MB getting sick, okay, 76ers, Bring your own food to Toronto. Bring your own water. Make sure you feed him. On oxygen? Yeah. No, I'm just mess with you. And B, you need some water right now? <laughs> Here, here's your bottle. I think it might be time to uh, show the highlights. Some of the highlights. There you go. Yeah, let's good, do that. Good segue. <laughs> Just trying to help us out here a little bit, you know? In case you missed any of the action tonight on ESPN. Again, we're taking you out to the podium as soon as the coaches and players Please, arrive. Please, get there. Here's Kawhi Leonard in the first quarter. And then Ben Simmons gets Boy, I love that pass and that play. You can see he was coming downhill fast. Everybody eyes on him. Got it to his teammate. And there's Tobias Harris. He also played well at the beginning Tobias of the game. Tobias Harris definitely showed up. Mm -hmm. he, he did. Ben Simmons scored or assisted on nine of Philadelphia's 13 first quarter field goals. Also, no turnovers for him for the entire game. That's big time. And he played through two early fouls, too, yep. which, which was significant, right? Uh, Embiid getting involved. Hey, how about J.J. Redick, who had just an atrocious game five here taking it to the cup. Philadelphia was up 42 to 23. Philadelphia went on a run. It was a 27-8 run, but here comes Toronto on a 12 nothing one. We're waiting. When, when is the bleeding going to stop here? You know, it was starting to come, and you can see this still right here. Momentum is there. 
Look at right now, down seven, but also give credit to Jimmy Butler and the Sixers. Right after this run by the Raptors, Jimmy took over. And I thought this was big. Mm. I thought this was big in the game. This this moment here, these were game-winning moments, even though it happened in the first half. When Butler took over and he stepped up and got this three-point play here, I thought that broke the, the, the momentum of Toronto. And consequently, Philly was able to go in with a nice margin at the half right. and also confident at the half. Butler scored the final seven points of the half for Philadelphia. They went into the locker room up 58-43. Again, it had just been a seven-point game right before this Jimmy Butler run. Third quarter, Kawhi Leonard trying to will his team back into it. The claw getting into the Ooh, paint wee. and throwing it down. He is tough and strong, and boy, he's throwing them shoulders into everybody. And there's Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons was good. I, I like they played him in the dunker spot a lot yeah. in the half court situation. Embiid getting the bucket and an opportunity for one more. He'd make the free throw. Yeah, TJ McConnell saying, take that, Drake. <laughs> That's the big time play for yeah. Joel Embiid. Right, the block on one end, then Ben Simmons on the other. Man, take a look ben at this Simmons rejection. Fast, I mean, the, these two guys here, and this is what gets you so excited about Philadelphia. When Embiid is, is at his, on top of his game, Simmons is on top of his game. You know, as a one-two punch, they're almost unstoppable. Big 18-4 run in the third quarter to essentially serve as the knockout punch. The score not indicative of the control Philadelphia had in this game throughout. You know, so much contribution tonight from Butler and Simmons, who was so much better, and Bede was better. A lot of the role players better. On the road, the role players, not that good. Kawhi and Siakam combined for 50 points in this game for the Raptors. The rest of the team combined just 51 points. So Kawhi and Siakam, 50. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, 51. Now, those guys that were critiquing tonight played really well in, in game five. Is it just we go home and they're fine? No, yeah, I mean, the guys that didn't play, they, they got a little bit of something on their mind right now. And obviously, you got to give credit to Kawhi Leonard. He is creating wide open shots for you. It's not like they're just playing one on one. He's creating so many double teams. So some of these yeah. guys are getting easier looks, Isaiah, versus a team where you don't have a guy you're doubling. And it's tough to go up against a good defensive team. But Kawhi is drawing two wherever he is. So somebody's going to have to knock down shots. I'm still disappointed in the way Fred Van Vliet has played throughout mm -hmm. this series. Wondering if you see if Nick Nurse maybe go to a Jeremy Lin. Yeah. Who, Ooh, not afraid to get his shots up. Now, they yes. might not be going in, but he's not afraid to get his shots up. And and, and he's all, and Jeremy Lin is also a playmaker. But, but Smitty, I, I look at a Game 7, and to me what a Game 7 for the home team is all about, it's not about you showing up and scoring 40 points. It's about you showing up and stopping the other mm -hmm. guy from scoring his 40 points. So Toronto is going to have to rest on their defense. That's where they're going to have to, you know, you know, butter their bread, so to speak. They're, they're going to have to, you know, get stops, get out in transition. But if this becomes a half-court game, you know, they got Embiid and you got Kawhi, you know, it can go either way. Mm -hmm. But you got – in Toronto, you got to get some stops. You got to rest on your defense. Van Fleet scored seven points in game one of this series. Since then, he scored a total of ten points. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that this team counted on so much last year. You heard Doris Burke talk about it on the broadcast tonight that Nick Nurse had contemplating taking him out of the rotation. He does so many things for you, right? He, he gets Kyle Lowry off the ball. He helps you out defensively. But he's also a guy who last year was counted on to hit a lot of big shots. And I think also it's not a great matchup because you, you look at they have Jimmy Butler, Ben Simmons, and Tobias Harris. Mm -hmm. Those, that's 6'10", 6 6'7", 6 6'8". 6 and then when you play him and Kyle Lowry together and you're not knocking down shots, you're giving up so much height between those two little guards. It's going to be interesting to see what Nick Nurse does as far as that rotation matching up with these bigger guards that the Sixers have. All right, let's go out to Philadelphia. Brett Brown live.